Oh, hey guys, it's Fudgeballs here, and I guess since you're already here, let's do the LPL recap. We are rapidly heading towards playoffs, ladies and gentlemen. We have one week left of the LPL, and as you're watching this, maybe there's even less in the summer split of 2020. But let's talk through where we're at as of right now as we head into the last few days of the split. We can take a look over our standings, and I'll pinpoint some of the things that you guys need to be looking out for. So when we look right towards the top of the standings, you can see JDG sitting pretty as of right now. They've locked in their spot for top four, and they're going to be gunning for that first or second seed. But it's around the middle of the table that it's really heating up. We've still got teams like BLG and EDG and RNG that are going to climb or going to try and climb to the middle of the table. You've got teams like V5WE, LGD, and FunPlus that are desperately trying to hold on to their spot. There's still a lot of fighting to be done. The Rogue Warriors Miracle Run is over. But with all of that said, it's time to get into the nitty gritty of it and look back over some of the series we've seen this week in the Rewind. So let's start the rewind by talking about EDG up against Fun Plus Phoenix because this series was a real heartbreaker for EDG fans at home because game number one, they looked amazing. Shaosheng had a flawless performance on Camille, but unfortunately they couldn't keep that rolling. Game number two was a much longer game, a much closer game, and FPX looked more coordinated during the team fights. They were able to scale up. And once we got to these kinds of team fights in the late game, the composition from EDG just didn't do what was required. Then as they moved over towards game number three, that's when things really start to pick up for FPX. We saw this moment where this is a, a very quiet game for the majority of it, but we had Shaosheng in the side lane, Scout in the side lane, and FPX, they just decided to run straight into the base. They called the bluff of EDG. EDG didn't respect it quick enough. It meant that Mako was caught out before the rest of the team could join the fight. It was a nice 5v4 in favor of FPX. And then they didn't even have to win the fight. They had Lamb's Respite, so nobody could kill them. They could just focus down onto the Nexus. And FPX managed to net themselves a win. Was it a clean win for FPX? Not really, but you know what? A win is a win. And when you're fighting for eighth place in playoffs right now, any win will do for FPX. For EDG, on the other hand, their playoff run is almost over. They have one series loss remaining, or they are out of playoff contention. So the second series I want to talk about in our rewind here is Top Esports and IG. And this is a series that we were robbed of a third game in. It was exceptionally close despite the 2-0 scoreline, but IG came out on top. And it was very evident in game number one. We saw IG build themselves an advantage throughout the early game. It was still relatively close, but when it came to fighting for Mountain Soul, Rookie really came out of the woodwork on his Azir. Check out his Emperor's Divide that he pulls out. But also, it felt like top esports really not as coordinated as we're used to seeing during these team fights. So IG managed to find themselves this fight. They got the Mountain Soul. Then off the back of that, they were able to force their way to end the game. But if it was game number two that really changed things, because Top Esports, as you can see on the scoreboard, they were ahead, they were in the base, they had the Baron, but Yu Yanja's out of position, Jackie Love thinks that he's protected by Braum, but he's not, and it means that IG can just about win out this fight. You can see how many health bars were blinking across the course of IG's health bars there, but a win is a win, says IG. They got a 2-0 at the end of the day, and it hurt. If you're a Top Esports fan, that loss hurt, but god damn. IG are back, and they are looking real good. So let's recap FBX against LGD. And this was by no means perfect League of Legends, but I'm okay with that. I just like close games. And LGD did the classic thing of winning one game of the series to give their fans false hope and then losing things out. Peanut was the standout performer for LGD as he almost always is stealing away the Elder buff, which meant that FBX, despite having an Ocean Soul, couldn't force a fight and grab themselves the Baron. LGD immediately seized this opportunity after previously getting rid of the inhibitor. Shie finds his opportunity to backdoor the rest of his squad, cancelling the TPs, making sure Shie gets some solo time at the base and finishes things off. But then game number three was thoroughly 
disappointing from LGD and great news for FPX fans because they were able to just team fight their way to victory because Gim Goon was a monster. He was so far ahead on this Mordekaiser that it was basically impossible for LGD to win out the team fights. And off the back of that win, FPX managed to take the series 2-1. Another win for FPX that may not have been the cleanest, but a win is a win is a win. And they kept their spot in the top eight, at least for now. It's time once again for the Pog play of the week. And this time it's Rookie from IG in a series against Top Esports. And it's game number two in the top lane. He grabs himself an Oriana triple kill and it was basically 1v3. The man is a menace. And we can take another look over the clip because I want you to keep your eyes on how he uses his shield and the amount of skill shots he's able to dodge out from Jackie Love. He originally used the shockwave, is flashed away from by 369, but then watch him either dodge or shield every single Q that Jackie Love is able to throw out and forces Jackie Love out of the play, then turns to Kasa, forces him out of the play, gets the kill onto Kasa, then sees Jackie Love has already used the arcane shift, gets the slowdown so he can flash forward to finish that kill off. The last one on tonight is just a nice, easy picking for him. And it's just a thing of beauty. And the thing is, he finishes that off with basically no mana, using the auto attacks during everything perfectly, optimizing the damage he can do. Rookie can do things in this game that nobody else can manage. With all of that said, let's take one last look at that clip in all of its glory. Or whether that's CS advantages, that's how they do it. The Shy is getting aggressed upon though, is 369 trying to finish the kill. They will get it before Nink and Rookie have arrived. Shockwave doesn't quite land, and TPB a champ, 369 finally falls. Ning walks away with his life. It's Jackie Love that arrived on the scene, but Rookie just bullies him out of the play immediately. Now Parsa gets turned on. Rookie just can't be stopped right now as he finishes off yet another one. On towards Jackie Love. Rookie is unbelievable. Now on tonight as the double kill well and truly earned. Give him the triple. So as we enter the final week of the LPL, I thought that we needed a special segment on the show. So this time we're gonna do, for the first time ever, the LPL Survival Guide. I'm gonna talk you through the standings and what each team needs to survive making it to playoffs. And also for the upper seeds, what they need to do to get themselves to first place. So let's take a look at our standings as they look right now and talk about what remains for each of these teams. Now you've got to remember each team plays 16 best of threes in the LPL. So eight wins is the halfway mark. BLG and EDG have to win every remaining series and need that magical eight wins if they want to be able to make it into playoffs. But the problem is there are so many other teams that already have eight wins for themselves that EDG and BLG will be relying on game difference. They'll be relying on tiebreakers, even if they get all of the eight wins that they need, even if they don't lose a single series for the rest of this time, they can still not make it. They're relying on other people. RNG is a similar story, not quite the same though. They only have seven losses, which means they can grab themselves nine wins. However, one of their four remaining series is against top esports, which is going to be difficult. So it's very likely they finish up on eight wins regardless. They're still relying on teams like FPX, WE, and LGD to do badly in their remaining series. Vici has the best chance out of anyone that's not in the top eight right now of making it to the playoffs. But with three series remaining, they still have to face both IG and Suning. And that is a scary prospect for any team. It's possible for Vici fans, but it's not probable. For the three teams on eight wins right now, it feels like smooth sailing ahead. Each team has at least one easier opponent remaining in their schedule, which means that they should find themselves on nine wins and all but guarantee their playoff spot. Anyone that does reach 10 wins, however, at this stage is locked in for playoffs, assuming that Vici loses just one more series this split. They'll be guaranteed that top eight. V5 and Suning, have just about already guaranteed their playoff spot. Uh, there are a couple of astronomical ways that they can lose out on that, but it's not worth getting into because it's such a low probability. So for the remaining series, the discussion then moves over to seeding. And the difference between fourth seed and fifth seed, or fourth and fifth when it comes into playoffs, is an entire best of five against one of the top six teams in the LPL. 
And if you don't make it to top four, that's a 20 championship point difference between fourth and fifth place finish. The top three are sitting pretty right now, though. IG and Top Esports have series that they should win remaining. And with one win required each to guarantee top four, they're pretty safe for quarterfinals at least. If neither team loses, though, IG cannot keep up with Top Esports as they've already lost an extra game. So Top Esports can guarantee a top two finish for themselves with just their own play alone. They're not relying on anyone else's results. It's all about how they do for the remainder of their series. JDG have already guaranteed themselves top four. There is no argument, there's no way for anyone to contest. And with one more win, they would guarantee, at very worst case, a tiebreaker for a top two spot. If they can win two games, they already are in the top two. They'll guarantee themselves a buy straight into the semifinals, which is unbelievable for them at that point. They're pretty much guaranteeing themselves the world championship. The slight spanner in the works for JDG is they do still have to face V5, which proved a challenge that IG struggled with and top esports couldn't defeat. So there is something there still in the way of JDG, but definitely looking the best in the league right now. But with all of that said, I hope that helped clear some of the confusions up. I hope that helped you get a better grasp of how likely it's looking for each of the teams in the top eight. But that's gonna round out our show for today. So thank you very much for watching. I hope I was able to get you back up to speed with the LPL action. If you're watching this on Twitch, make sure you go and check out the YouTube channel. If you're watching this on YouTube, make sure you go and check out the Twitch channel because we're either in the final week or we're heading to playoffs. So make sure you do not miss that action. But as always, I have been Munchables. You can follow me on Twitter at HeyMunchables and make sure you're following the LPL Twitter at LPL English as well for all of the updates for everything LPL. With that said, I'm going to leave you to it and I'll see you guys in Chapsalette.